Let me start off by asking you, at what age did you develop a passion for dance? Uh, well, because I can remember. You know, it's, uh, I'm Puerto Rican, so it, uh, it's just sort of, I grew up with it. You know, mm -hmm. my mom and my father used to dance. Uh, when they were younger, they were, they were salsa dancers in Puerto Rico. And, um, and so, you know, it's kind of, it just, it, it just happened. You know, my whole family, we, uh, we, uh, we love music, we love band. Um, my mom, actually, my, my aunt and my, my mom used to put, I was the only boy until my brother was born when I was six, uh, among a bunch of female cousins. And so they would always have me dance with them in the living room. They would partner me up. And I'd be the, I'd be the one having to partner all my three cousins <laughs> in the living room. Mm -hmm. and so, but, um, but yeah, no, I can remember. You know, I grew up with it. You know, I, I, I don't really have a specific age when I, when I can remember, but it's, it's always been part of, part of me. Okay. Since you said you grew up with it, when you decided to take it seriously, were your parents supportive of you? Um, well, to, to a certain extent. I, I actually, I, I've always wanted to be a cook. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a chef. And so, since I was a kid as well, you know, again, you know, being Puerto Rican and, and living in, in such a really strong, uh, Puerto Rican household, you know, I felt like I grew up in Puerto Rico, and so uh, uh, my mom taught me how to cook, and so I wanted to be a chef, mm -hmm. since, I, since I was a kid, and um, I still danced throughout, you know, I went to, to uh, I did theater in high school, I, I danced at home, and talent shows, and whatnot, and I ended, I ended up going to Johnson and Wales University in Providence, for culinary arts, and I joined a dance group up there as well, as I was going to school, but then I couldn't finish couldn't finish um, school because it was a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up uh, coming back to Jersey and joined, uh, I started working at Top Art and then joined a dance company in New York. And I just figured I'd kind of do it just, just to kind of kill some time because my whole plan was to go back to college. Mm -hmm. And uh, but then I just kind of went with it. And, um, and so... You know, to a certain extent, my, you know, my mom, my father, my whole family, you're going to my school, you're going to make the school, you know, there's really no life in, in dancing, you know, you're spending a lot of money, you know, you're not really making any money, you know, what kind of career do you want to do? You do? Um, and so for about a good year to two years, uh, it was a little tough because they thought that there's no, no life, uh, no real career uh, in dancing until, you know, until I was able to establish myself and got my first tour, got my first video, and, and then they were like, oh, well, there is a life in that. <laughs> and, and, and when did that happen for you? When do you feel that you actually became a professional? Uh, well, my first, uh, I was with my dance company in New York. Uh, it was a nonprofit it's in Harlem. And um, I joined when I was in 2001. And then... Uh, and then in 2003, uh, Lumi D ended up coming out with Uh Oh. And so she was friends with my company director, and so she needed dancers. And, um, and so I ended up being one of the dancers. I did her first two music videos, and then I did, I was, uh, I was overseas on a tour. And so that was the first time that I got to actually have a full professional experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so in 2003. Okay, and, and what, I, thought, you know, you know, I did it, and uh, it kind of just fell in my lap. Again, I didn't realize I wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. I just, again, I just loved to do it. And so when I realized that it was a calling that just kept on kept on calling it, it just kept on showing up. And so at that point, I was like, well, I guess this is the life I got to live. Okay, and once the work kept rolling in, what type of work ethic did you have to develop in order, you know, to to keep up with the opportunities that were coming to you? Uh, continue going to classes, training. Uh, I think for me, the, the most important thing is I love what I do. I, I have such a deep passion for what I do and that I don't, I've never put it in the context of work. 
Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's something that I love and, and who I am. And so I die 150,000% in everything that I feel passionate about. And so I think, it, in my case, that the, the, that work ethic is more of, you know, I know that I want to succeed in my life and I know that I love what I do too much to have to half at it. I don't, you know, and again, you know, we're right now in, a, in an industry where, you know, a lot of the young ones are coming up and, you know, anybody can kind of do what they want to do and get, make a name for themselves. And so for me, it was, I did this on my own. I didn't have any help. I, this is a choice that I, I decided to do on my own. And, um, and so I just, you know, it, it's just something that I, uh, it's kind of worked hard. I, I, I try to, it seems to work hard to maintain myself in that in that level in that stature. And I also I was an ROTC in high school, and so you know you, there's no better way to to develop a discipline than 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 in a military program. And so I was in, I was an ROTC for four years, mm-hmm. and so um, and so that kind of helped me as well sort of develop a, a certain discipline, um, listening and, and, and you know making sure that I'm in attention and that I'm focused. You've had um, many opportunities and accomplishments. What have been some of your most memorable ones, recent uh, and you know from back in the day? Uh, let's see. Well, definitely being part of my own band company in New York. You know, I was able to uh, um, just hone my skill and, and, and be around you know, all kinds of people uh, when I was in my band in New York. And you know, and again, there's, there's no other training in the world like in New York City. And um, and then my one of my my, my fondest ones was um, when I auditioned for me and Michael and uh, I first auditioned and uh, I didn't know who she was. I didn't know what the job was about. I just kinda of threw myself in there. And um think I'm a I'm a I'm a freestyle kid. You know, I, I love going to clubs and dancing. I, I have no training at all whatsoever. You know, my training was M T V, you know, VH one practice. Concert tours. Uh, you know, I did like, growing up in my house. You know, my mom um, watching. But that's that's my training. And so when I when I threw it, you know, when I threw myself into this audition with me and Michael, I didn't know what contemporary was. I didn't know that. Like, I, I didn't know what I was throwing myself into. And I mean, it was the toughest to this day, the toughest audition of my life. But it took me to Athens, Greece, and I was able to live in Greece for five months with five of the most amazing human beings I've ever been able to encounter. And I'm still really good friends with them. And, um, and so I have to say, one of my biggest accomplishments and that, that I'm most fond of is, is that moment, being able to know that I was able to get through a, a, an audition that I had no idea what it was about. And I, I threw myself 150,000%. I booked it, and I lived in another country for five months. And I built some amazing memories there. And uh, developed a great friendship with a lot of, you know, with, with me and Michaels. And, uh, you know, it, it's opened my, it opened my eyes to a whole new world of, of dance. And, and yes. Okay. Yeah, it opened a whole new world to me at that, that moment. So, you, you I don't have to say that. You mentioned the younger good. generation earlier. What advice would you have for them, for the, for the next generation of dancers that want to become professionals? Because since that you said, you know, you didn't have any help or any advice, what would you like to say to them? Uh, open your eyes, open your heart, and be humble. Um, you know, and now in, 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 we're in an age where it's all about technology, and you know, you, you can type in any name on the internet, and boom, and the video shows up and pops up. And, you know, the, the information is there. And so, what I would, I would say to the younger generation is tap into that. Really try to get as much information as you can on anything, and develop a discipline that works for you. Um, you know, there's, there's extremely talented young kids now, man. I, I mean, it's it's incredible to see ten year olds, eleven year olds, twelve year olds dance the way that I dance now at 29, mm-hmm. and I mean, it's mind boggling. I can't, I actually feel like there's a there's the next evolution of, of a human race. <laughs> they're, they're crazy talented. Yes, and so, yes. oh man, it's, it's insane. And so, 
you know, they're constantly being told they're amazing, they're amazing, they're amazing. And, uh, you know, and being told is such an amazing that you're constantly great, 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 and not being told, you know, what you have to work on mm-hmm. and to continue to grow and develop, I think it kind of stops them yeah. there. And, they, and, and then they feel like, all right, I'm the greatest, I'm the best, I don't have to work any harder than what I am now. And what they have to understand is that they're still young, and they're still 12, 13 years old. They, they're still kids, and they still have a lot to learn in life. And they might have experienced the world of dance at, 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 at such a young age, but they haven't experienced life. And that what I feel like that's what's going to elevate you to where you want to be or where you want to go. Mm-hmm. As a human being in, in, in your career, you know, it's experience life, experiencing life as, you know, as a human being. And so I think that, you know, yes, you know, they, they're, they're great and they're amazing and they have a huge future ahead of them. But remember, you're still kids, and you still, you know, you still want to get married. You still want to go party. You still want to do this. You still want to do that. You know, and so I think that they, my advice to them would be just to live your life. Live your life. It, it'll, only, it'll only benefit you in the future. Do you feel that it's important that the, the veterans and the industry professionals like yourself give back to the dance community? And in what ways... Should you guys be doing that? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, one, um, I mean, they, they look up to us. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not that old. I'm only 29, and, you know, I'm going to be 30 next month. And, you know, I, I, I think I still have <laughs> at least another 50, 60 years of this with me. Um, but I was, I, I, here's the one thing I, I always thought when I was, when I was actually, in their position and kind of going through this whole process was a lot of the older choreographers that I grew, that, that I grew up watching um, and auditioning for um, sort of they all went through the same things that we went through as dancers. Audition, let down, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the shadiness of the industry, you know, certain people. Uh, um, and so what was tend to happen is that when, you know, they go through all that, and then by the time they get to a point where they can book, you know, they're in a higher position, they get to book the jobs, get the dancers, create the opportunities, they kind of hold a grudge um, against what they they went through. And so there's no pattern change. They just kind of kind of go, okay, well, I went through it, now you're going to go through it. And so, you know, that's the kind of person I want to be. That's my kind of artist and, and leader I want to be. You know, we have to, as leaders, we have to be able to change that and, and shift it. And um, and so, you know, we just need to look out for each other, support each other, um, allow these kids to grow. But also, you know, if you're gonna, if, if you're gonna, uh, if you're gonna be working with them. You know, you want to be able to guide them in the right way because. Never know, you know, in the next 20 years, they're going to be in the same position you're in. Mm-hmm. And so what kind of information do you want them to give their, you know, the, the, the younger generation at their time when they, you know, when their time comes? Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? Yep. And so I think it's, you know, we, everybody's talented, everybody has skills, but I think it's more of a, in the moral aspect of it. You know, just being able to connect with them in, in a mental kind of way. So just to prepare themselves so that when they get to that point, they're able to pass out proper information yes the moral values that's that's definitely what's missing and definitely not what's being showcased in the classroom which leads me to my next question when you think about morals and values and principles you you cannot think about that and not talk about a legacy so what would your legacy be what how would you want people to remember you uh I love what I do. I'm passionate what I do. And, you know, I, I, at this point, you know, people know, people started to recognize my work as, you know, when, when the world puts something up on stage, you know, he's always going to go full out and he's always going to deliver something that, you know, you're not really, you're not seeing at the moment. Um, you know, I, I know that I'm not the best, but I know that I have something to offer the world. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and so if anything, you know, I want people to, one, 
remember me as a happy guy. Remember me as a human being that loved life, loved what he did, was passionate about what he did, and constantly pushed the boundaries in in the art form. Not just physically, but, you know, just in the artistic sense. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, yeah, that's it. You know, I'm not, I don't, I'm not trying to create a whole new movement. Mm-hmm. You know, because it's all been done before. Yes. You know? <laughs> Everything's been done before. Everything's been done. There's nothing new in this world. You know, but it's about how you're going to take that and, and remold it and make it fresh, make it new. Um, you know, how you're gonna how you're gonna re-inspire it. Yes. And so, you know, that's that's pretty much it. Is there anyone you would like to thank for helping you on your journey thus far? Uh, a lot of people. It's okay. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, it's your I, interview. Take your time. Well, my mom, I, you know, it might sound a little cliche, but my mom is, um, you know, she's, uh, she's always been a happy woman. She's, she's always been a huge light in me. And, and, and regardless, you know, she even though at, at a certain point she didn't accept what I was doing, you know, it's because she didn't understand it. Mm-hmm. And now she understands it, supports me all the way. And I mean, she's one of my biggest supporters, and I and it's because of her that I do what I do. You know, she instilled me, she instilled in me the love of music and the love of dance, and that's what starts. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not not about money. You know, again, I don't consider what I do a, a job. You know, a job is something that I, you know, you wake up every morning dreading to go to. I don't dread doing what I do. You know, I do it in my spare time in my bedroom. I do it in the studio. I do it. I do it in, on stage. You know, um, and so she really instilled the the love of, of of the arts in me. And regardless of I, if today I don't ever continue it as a career, I will always do it, and I will always love it. Mm-hmm. Um, me and Michaels is definitely somebody who has opened my eyes. In a, in a lot of ways, you know, she's, she's allowed me to explore my uh, my artistic expression in, in a different way, in a way that I thought that I, in a way that I never even tapped into, you know. And regardless of, you know, of me having technique or me being trained or anything, she saw something deeper in me. And I thank her for that because she really helped jumpstart a huge part of my career. And, um, and so her, um, well, I mean, I could probably, I, I can name a bunch. I could be Teddy Florence, uh, Ruthie and Chelsea D. Um, I mean, there's, there's a lot of people, but I'll just keep it like that. <laughs> okay, that's fine. All right, so that'll conclude our interview.